Good morning. Welcome to Well Service this morning. Thank you for being with us. We come knowing that God is present with us and he will bless each of our hearts. Why don't we get up and take a moment and bless those around you with a word of peace. Are we on here? There we go. Please be seated for just a moment. We have one or two quick announcements. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be quick. Um, I just found out it's not in the bullet in the newsletter, so I just want to let you know it will be next week. The Reformation events that were postponed from earlier are going to take out take go take place throughout the month of October. There's a whole list on the bulletin board. It's just a typed list. We're getting the official posters soon. Um, the first eighth of October, pastor's doing a Sunday school special with Luther. So please come watch him talk about Luther. And then, and then <laughs> the next Saturday, the 14th, will be 9:30 to 12, and we'll have Luther talks, and we'll then we'll have crafts and games and things, and then we'll have Katie Luther with my mother, who's re it's really going to be good. And she's been working on it a long time. And then, um, then we'll have more Luther talk. So from 9.30 to 12 on Saturday the 14th, and then we'll do the same thing on the 21st, but it will be different content. Okay, so it was, it is, it's not the same thing two Saturdays in a row. It's different content. And then on the 29th, which is a Reformation Sunday, we're having a special joint service of Reformation, one service at 10.30, and then after that, we will have the German dinner, which um, Edith consented to cook for us. So it'll be a regular dinner celebration. And then that evening, choir is going to perform a concert at 7 p.m. of some Bach and some Handel. And it's anyway, it'll be really good. Yeah, you won't want to miss that. And after that, um, and we're going to have orchestra, you know, so please tell your friends. We'll have posters for that. And then after that, we'll have a German dessert reception, which a lot of ladies have already signed up to bring uh, German whatever goodies so anyway the desserts. Yep. yes it will be yep. a good time it's, there's lots of stuff going on please come to any or all bring your friends to any or all it'll be a good time uh, we'd also like to invite Lynn Johnson up for a moment this morning uh, we've been blessed for months now with these um, banners that Lynn made and created and so I wanted to ask Lynn to share with you a little bit uh, about the, the story of her inspiration to do that. Um, good morning. Um, in November of 2015, something happened. Sorry, this is kind of out of the box. Just hold it a little closer. 
closer to your mouth and you don't have to be afraid of it. <laughs> um, and then Teresa Bowley helped me to, um, she came up with the Fruits of the Spirit, which I thought was a great idea, so we made the wall. And um, I was actually the first idea from, from like middle school. Okay. school. <laughs> well, um, I started looking into the beginning of the Fruits of the Spirit and the imagery that was out there for that, and it was all fruits and vegetables, and that didn't make sense to me. So,
list of scriptures and they fit perfectly in the commandments and the fruits of the spirit. So uh, there is a, a purple um, common placement of scripture on each one. It is meant to be small. It is meant to draw you in. When you go closer, there are scriptures woven all through the design. And those scriptures are the scriptures God gave you. To the scientist, God is the great scientist, and to the doctor, God is the great healer. But this is so beautiful to hear and be reminded how, to the artist, God is the great creator. Mm. Um, he works in, in all these different ways. That was, that was really wonderful to hear the story of those. I just saw the pretty things when they went up, and I didn't know any of that history. But it's beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lynn. Lynn does all of our uh, marketing, our flyers. Just, just a great blessing. and. Um, I think it was neat how you had your entire staff wrestling over what scriptures and how to put these Christian banners together. And I also thought it was neat that, at, that in, or, in order to try and do something to the glory of God, you couldn't completely depend on your professional skills. God needed to minister to your spirit, you know, so that, that would come through. So thank you for sharing that with us. That was wonderful. Please get up and let's uh, have some praise time with the Lord. Yeah, Stan. Um, I know we're, we're probably running a little long, but I want to read a couple verses from Psalm 116. Um, I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple-hearted. When I was in great need, he saved me. Be at rest once more, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. The Lord has been good to you, St. John's. Let's lift up his voice.
Just bring up the next song, that'd be great. Thank you. Rock of ages left for me, let me hide myself in. Our first reading this morning is responsive. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, that you present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, for this is your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and let no one think of himself more highly than he ought. For as we are members in one body, yet not all members have the same function. So although we are many, we are one body in Christ and members of one another. Having the gifts that differ according to the grace by which they have been given to us, let us use our gifts, let us love without hypocrisy, let us hate evil and cling to good, let us be kind and affectionate to one another in love, in honor, giving preference to others. Let us not lag in our diligence, but fervent in spirit, let us serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in trial, continue steadfast in prayer, meet the needs of brothers and sisters, bless even those who persecute you, 
Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. If it is possible, as much as depends on us, we will live peacefully with all people. We will seek to overcome evil with good. Knowing this, that now it is high time to awake from our sleep. Our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us cast off works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh. This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson is from 2 Timothy 2, verses 22 to 24, Titus, ver, uh, ch Titus chapter 3, verse 2, and 9 through 11. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Avoid foolishness and ig in ignorant disputes, knowing that all this generates strife. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all. Speak evil of no one, be peaceable and gentle, showing humility to all people. Avoid foolish disputes, arguments, and strivings about the law. These are unprofitable and useless. Reject a diversive person after warning them, knowing that such a person is warped and sinful, condemning themselves. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel this morning is taken from John chapter 17, uh, which is uh, the Scripture's recording of Jesus' prayer the night before He went to the cross, um, His prayer for us. This, we're going to begin John 17, verse 1. After Jesus said this, He looked up to heaven and He prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify Your Son that Your Son may glorify You. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And continuing in verse 20, Jesus prays, and now my prayer is not for them alone, but I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. This is the gospel of the Lord. Um, I don't have a children's message this morning. You may be uh, stand, re, remain standing. We'll join together in the creed. Yep. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. You should have a handout this morning that has a, a scripture passage on it from Philippians. If you did not get one, um, please raise your hand and we'll ask one of the folks in the back to bring them forward. We need to, um, we're going to look at that uh, scripture from Philippians that's on there this morning. How many of you saw the Luther movie this past Tuesday? Wow, excellent. Did you like it? I liked it. It was very, very good. Um, uh, I don't know if you picked up at the beginning, they said that every word that Martin Luther spoke in that two-hour piece came actually as a quote from him, one of his writings or one of his sermons. So it was not, uh, not the words were Martin Luther's um, for sure. Uh, <clears throat> I was struck by one phrase where he said, wherever, 
um, wherever the Lord builds a church, the devil builds a chapel. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, um, uh, you are allowed to not be in church this week on Friday and on um, uh, Monday, Monday and Friday. Um, that's the only two days you have off. Because Tuesday night we have peacekeepers. And I know uh, everyone is going to try and come that first night, and then once you come, the Lord's going to grab you. You're going to want to come Wednesday night. You're going to want to come Thursday night. We'll give you a break on Friday, and then um, Saturday night we have the fundraising dinner for the Taste of Kenya for uh, building a Christian school in Kenya. If you have not participated in that in the past, I know you'll be blessed. Uh, you can purchase tickets online. Uh, and then uh, next Sunday, we've got the voters meeting, so just like Bill and I, you can live at church this week. So, uh, All right, let's pray, ask the Lord bless our time together. Gracious Father, we thank you for the gift of your word. Open our spirit now to receive that which you would speak to us, uh, not just in our heads, but buried deep within our hearts, that we might not sin against you, that we might be guided, uh, guided by your Spirit so that we could reflect to others the glory and the wonder of a merciful and gracious Christ. Bless our time now for Jesus' sake. Amen. I want to begin this morning with a story uh, concerning some real people in the Bible. Now, I want to be clear. Um, I'm not telling a story that's found in the Bible, but it's based on some real New Testament stories about folks that Jesus healed. There were three men, each of them in the New Testament. Each man had been born blind, and miraculously, each of them had been healed and received sight from Jesus. Now, these three men had a mutual friend, a lame man who was crippled from birth. One day, the lame man was lying on a stretcher as the three men shared with him their stories of being healed by Jesus. The first man to speak was named Bartimaeus, and he said, friend, I can't wait to tell you the wonders of what Jesus did for me. I was sitting outside the gates of Jericho, and I heard Jesus and a large crowd walking by, and so I crowd out as loud as I could, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And, and he stopped, and he asked me, what do you want me to do for you? Teacher, I replied, I want to see. And he answered, go your way. Your faith has made you well, and instantly I could see. So I'm here to tell you, my lame friend, that Jesus uses our faith and His Word to heal. Now, the other two men should have rejoiced in Bartimaeus' testimony about Jesus, but they were not happy at all. The man from Bethsaida jumped right in, crying out, no, 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 no! Jesus does not heal anything like that. Jesus spit right on my eyes and touched me with His hands, I could see a little, but I could only see shadows. So Jesus spit on my eyes a second time, and then, then I could see. So I am convinced that Jesus always uses His very spit and His touch to bring healing, and not instantaneously, but in gradual stages. Well, the third man is turning red in the face, biting his tongue, waiting to speak. He said, gentlemen, I must say, I have cause to seriously doubt the validity of your healings. Because when Jesus healed me, he did use his spittle, but he spit on the ground, and the spit was not enough. He had to add mud to it. And then he said, after putting it on my eyes, go wash in the holy waters of the pool of Siloam. And when these special waters washed away the spit and the mud, only then could I see. So, gentlemen, I am 100% certain that Jesus heals using external things like spit and mud and the holy waters of the pool of Siloam. And so, forgetting their common bond, that they were all healed from blindness, and forgetting that each one of them had been healed miraculously by Christ, 
the three of them began to argue, forgetting completely the crippled friend who was laying at their feet. They were divided in conflict, each of them, each of them insisting that God could only heal their way. Of course, three new denominations were born that day, the Spitites, the Mudites, and the Bartamites. The Spitites make the spit of Christ a sacrament and insist that the Lord heals in stages. The Mudites insist on the holy waters of Siloam, and the Bartamites say, we don't need physical sacraments at all because everything depends on a person's faith. Now, that story is apocryphal, but the sad thing is we can all relate to it because the bond of unity in the body of Christ is so easily broken when we each insist on seeing and doing things only our way. And the broken and the hurting of this world who need the healing touch of Jesus lie at our feet all around us. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we who have been healed by the touch of Jesus have an urgent and critical calling to bring the healing touch of Jesus to those who are still broken. Bless and be with us as individuals and as a congregation that you would give us the privilege of being used by you to bless others. For Jesus' sake, amen. Now, the gospel of Jesus Christ is called the gospel of peace. And most essentially, that's peace between God and us, peace between God and you. Because you and I are sinners, and the Bible says God hates sin. It says that our sin is a, is a stench in His holy nostrils and that God punishes sin, and that sinners are at war with God. But when Jesus came to earth, the angels sang peace, peace on earth, and the goodwill of God unto all people, because the Prince of Peace, Jesus, had entered into this world, and Jesus fought the battle with sin and Satan, and on Easter, Jesus rose victorious Having done what? Having bought for you and me peace, peace between us and God. To know that peace, to live in the perfect peace of heaven forever, you have to have Jesus. You have to, by faith, place your hope for peace, not in yourself, not in your religion, but solely and only in Jesus and the peace that He bought for you through His precious blood. You see, Jesus is the ultimate peacemaker. God takes us just as we are. You don't have to be good enough to receive Jesus and salvation. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You don't have to wait till you've cleaned up your life. God takes us through our trusting in Jesus, God takes us just as we are. But the truth and power of the gospel is if you're saved by faith in Jesus, God doesn't leave you where you are. The New Testament says that we've become a new creation. And when Paul lists a bunch of sins in the New Testament, he says that's what you were in the past. And then he goes on and says that we have been changed, set apart. We've been made different in Jesus Christ. And one of the key characteristics of this is peace, peace in relationship with others. C.F.W. Walther was the first president of the Missouri Synod, and during his first year in office, he preached a passage on Romans. And you don't have to look at it now, but on the back of your handout, there's a quote from C.F.W. Walther that talks about how being a person of peace is evidence 
evidence that we're a Christian. This theme of unity and of peace is constant in the Scriptures, and we're going to be studying that with, with Bryce Thomas all this week. Bryce, kind of raise your hand. And Bryce is with uh, uh, Peacemakers, Ambassadors of Reconciliation, several groups. He's worked many, many years in this process. Um, he's here this week to teach us from Scripture uh, about um, being um, peacekeepers, peacemakers, uh, and it's not just uh, learning about how to do that in the church, it's learning about how to do that in your homes and, and with your neighbors and with people at work. So please come and join us this week. But if you take out your handout, I want to go through a scripture with you from Philippians 1. And if you would, once you have that out, we're going to alternate verses. Uh, I'll read the first verse, and then if you would read the next one, please. The Holy Spirit writes, Conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. And then whether I come to see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and mercy, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one Spirit and purpose. And do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. In verse 27, the term translated striving together is a Greek term from the sports arena. It's soon ethelo. Soon means with or beside, and ethelo means to compete. That's where we get our word athletic from. And so what he's saying here is to compete together, side by side. I call it, this is Paul's call to us to be teammates in Christ. The Spirit writes that we strive together for something. It says, for the faith of the gospel. The gospel is at stake as we strive together as teammates in Christ. Later in chapter 4, Paul admonishes two believers to agree with one another, and he tells them why. He says, agree with one another for the cause of the gospel. In our gospel reading from John, Jesus connects our unity with God's mission to the world, that as they see us as one with Him and one with each other, then they will know that the Father is God. Striving together as teammates is essential to the mission God has given us. Today's Scripture also says that when we are united as teammates in Christ, verse 28 says that it's a sign. It says it's a sign that we will be saved. Like Walther, being peacemakers, living in peace, Walther said is a sign that we are true believers. And our text also says that our being peacemakers is a sign to the world. It's a sign to the world that loves conflict that they will be destroyed, that they need peace in Christ. We preach the gospel. That's the message of God and salvation. But Scripture makes it clear that somehow that message is enriched and empowered by our peace and unity working together as teammates in Christ. Are you a peacemaker? How can you tell? Verse 27, Paul says, conduct yourselves in a manner, what? 
worthy of the gospel. The word worthy there means in congruence with. Conduct yourselves in congruence with the gospel of peace. Do we live and speak in congruence with the message of peace in Christ? And then finally, the Spirit writes, be like-minded and having received this same love and now being of one Spirit, we are also, it says, of one purpose. That's the last point. Being teammates in Christ means we strive together with one purpose. And what is that purpose? Let's finish our story of the three blind men and the cripple. Our story had a happy ending because while they were arguing over procedures and who was right and who was wrong, the three blind men heard the cries of their crippled friend. And so they recruited a fourth man to their team, a good Lutheran, always ready to help. And the four teammates in Christ lifted the cripple on his stretcher, and they carried him to a house where Jesus was teaching. And united together, they climbed to the roof and cut a hole in it and lowered the man down into the house where Jesus healed them. And if they had not teamed up around that single purpose of saving a lost, broken man, he would have never gotten healed. But they were united with one purpose in the gospel, and that was this man needed saving, and only Jesus could do it. Amen? Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank You that we have peace with You in Christ. We thank You that we have a peace inside that passes all understanding. And we thank You for the call to be peacemakers, to bring such a treasured gift to a world so unsettled, so lacking in peace. Lord, we are not by nature makers of peace, but you have changed us. We are a new creation in Christ. Enable us Enable us to to be a voice and a presence of peace in a world of chaos and conflict. Amen. Thank you. At this time, we'll collect our offerings and gifts of love unto the Lord, if you would. Now, the next time you read the story of the gospel where the four men lowered the cripple into the uh, down where Jesus was, it was not the three blind men.
for the sake of the body of Christ broken on the cross, for the sake of the blood that he shed to wash away our sins, we are able in peace to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given and broken for you. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. O Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Amen. And you may be seated for the distribution of Holy Communion. Yeah. 
Christ strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting, and may you go in his peace. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. Um, we have just a real quick announcement from Jessica. Please join us down in the fellowship hall for our first session with Bryce. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> 